Hi freshmen, my name is Alyssa Clendenning and I am here today to talk to you about some resources that you can use to pick your right major and then a subsequent career based off that major. So at this point in your Citadel career, you have already picked your major. That's great. It may be something that you're interested in. It may be something that you want to do long term. But if you decide that that major is not right for you, now is the time to decide that before you get into all of those classes, before you become a junior or a senior and you've taken X number of credit hours, now is the time to really determine if that major is right for you. So I'm going to talk to you today about some resources that you can use to determine if that is right for you. So let's look at our training objectives for the day. So our task is determine is to determine the correct major for you. Given instructions from the Career Center, you should be able to make an informed decision about the major which best fits your life. Let's talk about some good and bad reasons to pick your major first of all. So I want to start with the bad reasons to pick a major. Someone told you to major in it. So if your parents told you to do it, if they think that you um, would be good at this and they kind of pigeonholed you into this major, that would be a bad reason. Another bad reason is just following in your siblings or friends footsteps and they chose it for you. So you're kind of like, well, I don't know anything other than what my older sibling or my friend did. So I'm just going to pick the same major as them. That's another bad reason. A third bad reason is that you think that the major looks easy and it will not require a lot of work. So, you know, that could be depending on what your skill level is. That could be depending on what your interests are. But if it looks easy and you think that it is not going to be hard. Last bad reason to pick a major is that you think the major will get you the most money. So I know that some of us are and driven by money and some of us are driven by success but if you're not going to be good at this major if you're not going to like this major if you're not going to like the career then that's going to be a bad reason to pick a major regardless of how much money that you make so on the other side let's talk about some good reasons to pick a major it is compatible with your interests so you may not realize this yet, but this is a job that you're going to be doing at least 40 hours a week. You're going to spend more time at work than you typically are going to spend at home. So you want to make sure that this is something that you like, something that you are interested in, something that is going to keep you happy, busy, entertained for the long haul. Another good reason to pick a major is you know a job you want which requires this major. So for example, if you want to be uh, you know, an accountant, if you want to be an electrical engineer, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be blank, and you know that that job requires a major, that would be a good reason to pick that said major. You would need to do a little bit of your research to determine what that major would be, but if a job that you want requires it, then that would be a good reason to pick your major. Future employability, so a good reason to pick that major is if it is going to be a growing field like computer science, information technology, engineering. Those are just a couple of examples of some growing fields so you feel comfortable knowing that in the future there is a high employability rate there. You are good at the subject matter so if you are good at math, if you are good at history, if you are good at science, then I think picking that major really is in line with that because it is something that you are skilled at. And also future income potential. So uh, kind of in line with the future employability, you know that this major, this career is going to be around forever or it is going to grow exponentially by whatever percentage. So you know that there is future income earning potential there because of the growth that is going on in that field. So as you are looking at these two lists on your screen, think about why you chose your major. Hopefully that reason falls under the good reasons. If you chose your major for one of those bad reasons, then I think this presentation today will really help you out to determine if that major is right for you. So you'll notice on the good reasons to pick a major, we've talked about interests, we've talked about you are good at, AKA you are skilled at. So we'll get into that. That is gonna be one of the resources that we talk about today, playing up your strengths, playing up your interests to pick a major and to pick a career.
So let's go with our very first resource to pick a major. On a notebook, on a scratch piece of paper, on a napkin, it doesn't matter. I want you to work through this visual aid with me because what this tool is going to do is help you pick a major based on what you like. So on your screen, draw a diamond. So that's the shape of a diamond, not a diamond ring, but the shape of a diamond. Okay, now I want you to divide this diamond from top to bottom. Then divide the diamond from right to left. So now it looks like a kite. All right, in my top left corner, I want you to write the word who. Then jot some things down on the outside of the diamond. Who do you want to be around all day? Maybe this is students. Maybe this is engineers. Maybe this is professionals. Maybe this is amateurs. Maybe this is um, elderly. Maybe this is children. Who do you want to be around all day? All right, in my top right hand quadrant, I want you to write the word what. Then outside of the diamond, what will you be doing all day? What skills, what things will you be doing? Maybe this is sitting at a computer. Maybe this is programming. Maybe this is working hands on. Maybe this is teaching, instructing, educating. Maybe this is anything. What do you see yourself doing in that future career? All right, in our bottom left quadrant, I want you to write the word where. Outside of that, where will you work all day? Inside, outside. This could be a geographic location, so maybe South Carolina, or maybe the Southeast, or maybe Greenville, South Carolina. Maybe it's a hospital that you have on your mind. Maybe it is a specific company that you wish to work for. Where will you be working all day? And lastly, in the bottom right quadrant, I want you to write why. And outside of the diamond, what is your purpose or meaning for choosing this job? What is your why? Is it to help people? Is it to put your skills to use? Is it to be a leader? Is it to make a difference? What is your why? If you're still writing, that's fine, but I am going to move on. This is just kind of to help us get some of our thoughts down. We're not turning this in or anything like that. So if you are not done, that is totally fine. So as I move through this, the rest of this presentation, I want you to think about what you wrote in your career mapping diamond. Are you getting a sense of what your dream career would be? Do some of the things that you wrote down surprise you? Do they not surprise you? What we are going to do is to take this career mapping diamond a step further to research and explore our options. Um, we're going to try to create an action plan of how you can get to that career. But the visual aid is really what that diamond is, is just to, I think it will help you see that you're not thinking about these answers in too much detail. By writing them down quickly, it will hopefully illuminate some things for you that maybe you didn't think about before, or maybe it is in line with exactly what you thought that you wanted to do. Either way, that visual mapping is just to help you write your thoughts down, 
and to see where those thoughts take you and where they lead you. So let's talk about our action plan. The third, I'm sorry, the second resource to help you pick the right major is SIGI 3. So SIGI 3 is a software program to help you identify your values, interests, personality, and skills. So throughout the rest of this, I am probably going to refer to those as your VIPs. So just keep in mind that, that stands for values, interests, personality, and skills. So by determining your VIPs, this information can help you explore your career options, determine if your major is the right fit for you, and learn your strengths and weaknesses. So you will see what you are skilled at. You will also see what you are not skilled at. You'll see what you're interested in and also what you are not interested in. So by finding out this information, which is going to be specific and tailored to each of you, so we are all going to have different VIPs, I think that this will really help you get an idea of what you're interested in and how it relates to that bigger picture. But also you'll see number two here, determine if your major is a good fit. So if you are not skilled at your major, it is probably not going to be a good fit. Looking at exploring career options. If you are not interested in certain career options, then your major may not be a good fit. So I hope that you can start to see how these all kind of come together. How you are going to access SIGI 3 is from the Career Center's Resources tab. So that is citadel.edu slash career. Once you click on the Resources tab on the left-hand side, you will see this SIGI 3 icon. What you are going to do is to create an account. So you need to select New User, Create an Account. Keep in mind that your access code is going to be the two words, your plan. No space. It doesn't matter if you do all lowercase or all uppercase, but your plan is your access code. For the desired ID, use your student Lasane Gateway information. So for example, when I log into Lasane Gateway, I use A. Clinton. So that is my desired ID. I would recommend that you do that because you're going to be able to remember that. It will also ask you to set a password. Go ahead and just use that same password for Lasane Gateway because again, I think you'll be able to remember it. You're going to hit start and complete all of the action items in red. After you do that, select continue. Under the section self-assessment, click each bold link to take the assessment. So for example, you will see this header self-assessment. In bold, you will see the words values, interests, personality type, and skills. After you have clicked on each of those four words, you will have a green check mark marking that you have done each of those sections. Now you can really utilize SIGI 3 to determine what your VIPs are. So you have to have four green check marks by each of these words, or excuse me, one check mark by each of the four words in order to do these one, two, three steps down at the bottom. So after you have the check marks, click portfolio in the upper right hand corner. View the information on this page to evaluate your VIPs. So on your portfolio is where it is really going to lay out for you what you value most, what you are interested in, what your personality type is, and what you are skilled at. So like I have mentioned before, some of these may be surprise. Some of these may not be a surprise at all. An example for me is under my skills. I am not skilled at math. I do not like math. Math and I do not get along. So skills is not something that is high on my skills assessment. Another thing for my interests is teaching, advising, educating, which is why I am the career education coordinator in the Career Center. Another thing that I value is something different every single day. I value variety in my job. So even though I work Monday through Friday, eight to five every single day, my day to day looks very different. I have student appointments, I have presentations, I have LTPs, I have networking events. So my day to day doesn't always look exactly the same. So some of these things that I'm mentioning to you are not a surprise to me. You should have things like that. Another thing um, 
that my profile recommends for me is a degree in social and behavioral sciences. Well, I actually have two degrees in social and behavioral sciences. So to me, I already had those degrees whenever I took the SIGI-3 assessment. So to me, this was not surprising. This was reiterating the fact that I chose the right major for me, that I'm in the right job. So I hope that that sort of thing happens for you. You can also take this a step further by number three. On your portfolio page, click Suggested Occupations in the upper right-hand corner of this screen. Once you are on this screen, you can see recommended jobs for you based on your SIGI-3 assessment and VIPs. So what that means is it is going to compile your VIPs, your values, your interests, your personality, and your skills, and it is going to recommend some occupations for you. So I think this is especially beneficial because maybe some, maybe your dream job is on there, but also maybe something that you hadn't considered before could be on there as well. So this is a great way to see those suggested occupations. So again, is your dream job on there? Is the job that you want because of the major you chose on there? If it's not, Maybe you chose your major for a bad reason. If it is, maybe you chose your major for a good reason. So explore these, look at these jobs. Once you click on the specific job as well, it will also show you some information about that specific job. Pay, work environment, tasks that you might um, complete. So there are a lot of information that you can find on SIGI 3 what are the VIPs and how do they impact career choices? So you've heard me mention values, interests, personality, and skills, but how do they impact your career choices? By choosing a major and your eventual career, based on what is best for you, you are more likely to stick with it and enjoy it. So if you chose your major for a bad reason, someone told you to do it, you think it'll be easy, but you end up hating it, then you're not likely to stick with it. You are not likely to enjoy your day-to-day -day job, your day-to-day -day career. Your major can affect your career because it is a culmination of what you're interested in and what you are skilled at. So you can see from this Venn diagram here, we have your values, your interests, your personality and skills. A culmination of all of those right there in the middle is that sweet spot of finding your perfect career. And I'm not necessarily saying that each of your VIPs is going to be in equal balance. They may not all be 25% represented in your perfect career, but being able to touch on at least some aspect of each of your VIPs is truly going to lead to the perfect career for you. And moving on to a little bit more about our VIPs, how can we apply these to real life? The Career Center encourages you to constantly search for environments where you can use your skills and abilities in ways that will help you develop professionally. So this says environments where you can use your skills. So go out and get internships. If you're kind of not really sure what you want to do, getting an internship is a great way to get that hands-on experience. Did you like it? Great. Maybe that could be your future career. Did you not like it? That's also great. I would rather you figure that out as a student rather than when you have graduated with a degree and you are working in a job that you don't really like. Find ways to encourage interest through experiential learning like internships, study abroad, service learning, and or research. So if you're interested in volunteering, go out and volunteer in the community. That could be something that really meshes and molds into what you want to do as a career. If you're interested in research, we have a great undergraduate research department on campus. Do research. That could be medical research. That could be animal research. That could be plant. There's all sorts of research that you can do, and I definitely did not even name all of them. Seek out opportunities that are compatible with your values and personality type. So a great example of something that is compatible with your personality type is if you are an introvert. You may be um, want to sit at a desk and you would be fine if you didn't really have any human interaction, but you have your computer, you have your desk, you have your tasks, and you're just a little bit introverted. If you were thrown into a very extroverted situation, you had to teach, you had to advise, you had to give presentations, that is not going to be comfortable for you. That is not going to be compatible with your personality style. So do think about those things. I do think that challenging ourselves is a great way to learn new things about ourselves. 
but you also don't want to be uncomfortable and unhappy in the job that you are in because it isn't compatible with your values or your personality style. So again, about the values, I've already mentioned this. I value variety in my everyday life. If I was doing the same thing every single day, day in, day out, it would get so monotonous for me. So I really seek out opportunities that are compatible and in line with my values and my personality style. Therefore, I encourage you to do the same thing as well. What can I do with this major is the third resource that we are going to talk about. It is an online resource to help you connect your major to career options. So just like the name suggests, what can I do with this major? It is going to give you common majors, accounting, business, psychology, history, political science, engineering, just to name a few. And it's going to help you see some things that you can do within each of those specific majors. So I'm going to click here. And once what can I do with this major opens up, I want to show you what it looks like. So on our resources page, there was SIGI 3 that I mentioned before. And here's what can I do with this major. So clicking on the icon and clicking on view all majors, you can see the large list of majors that we have here. So there's accounting, there's, um, let's see, what else do we have here? Biological sciences, athletics and sport, chemistry. So you can see that there's all sorts of majors through here. I'm not gonna mention all of these, but I just wanna scroll down so you can see that most, if not all majors that we have at the Citadel are represented here on this list. So I am going to just click on one of these so that you can see how you can use this resource. So I'm going to click on history. Once you click on the specific major, so this would be the major that you are interested in or the major that you are majoring in, you can see that it is going to break down history by an area. So this first area is local and state government. What are the employers within that area? And what are the strategies to be successful? So maybe this tells you to get an internship. Maybe this tells you to get a certification or to take specific classes. Again, as a freshman, this is valuable information for you to have now. You don't wanna find out that you need an internship or that you need a certification or that you need to take classes when you're a senior. You want to find this out now so that you can plan, you can take your classes accordingly, you can get internships. So scrolling through here, you can see that federal government is another area within history. There's the employers, and there's the strategies to be successful. So I'm not gonna go through each of these, but I am gonna scroll through slowly just so that you can see. Look for your major. What are the areas? I know as I was looking through this, my major was psychology. I know as I was looking through, I thought, wow, I never knew that you could do that. Again, this was after I had my degree, after I had my master's degree, but it will be very eye-opening to you. Do a little bit of research what uh, if you want to work in curatorial and archival management, what museums in your hometown could you potentially work at this summer? This is going to help you do some exploration. So look for your major and reach out to the Career Center if you have any questions. Man, history has a lot of stuff. And you can see down here, there are even more resources for you. So this is where you can do your research to plan now as a freshman. Basically what you are trying to do, the culmination of this entire presentation is helping you go from here at the Citadel as a cadet student to here. These are our success stories. These are students that have used the Career Center. They have networked, they've created a resume, and they have been success stories. So the first one is a student named Clayton Burke. He is a student that regularly regularly networks at Career Center events. So pre-COVID, we had employers on campus. Now in the middle of COVID and potentially even post-COVID, we have virtual events, but that is still a way that you can network with employers at those events. We actually have our career fair starting February, um, 23rd. So that is this Tuesday. That is today. 
um, well, depending on when you listen to this, February 23rd, 24th, and 25th. We are going to have 15 employers looking to hire our students, so attend this event. Clayton is currently in his third internship. All of his internships have been at different sites. If you can, interning at different sites is going to give you even more knowledge. So instead of getting comfortable in an internship, challenge yourself. What else can I learn? Maybe you're kind of deciding between a few different career paths. Intern at each of those interests to see which one piques your interest even more. Our second student is Amanda Teague. She has a great success story. I love talking about Amanda's success story. At our fall 2019 career fair, she, for a class, was required to talk to four employers. So she had done her research and knew three employers that she wanted to talk to. She came to us, the Career Center staff, and said, okay, I need to talk to one more. Who should I talk to? We recommended that she talk to SRS Distribution, who will actually be at our career fair this spring 2021. We said, go talk to SRS Distribution. They actually hire quite a few students for internships in full-time positions. Because she went and talked to SRS Distribution, she actually ended up interning with them in the summer of 2020. So just because of that conversation, she did not have SRS Distribution on her mind. But because she went, she showed up, she was prepared, she had her resume she ended up getting an internship with SRS Distribution for last summer. Because of this, she had to practice her interview skills. So that is something that you're gonna to want to do as you get into internship and interview situations. Practice those skills. Amanda is a supply chain and logistics concentration. Our last student is Xavier. He is actually, this is a finance sophomore, he's actually a finance junior. He started interacting and connecting with the Career Center his very first semester. So even though this is your six, this is your second semester, you could be one of those success stories that we talk about. He was very active as a freshman. He came in, he connected with employers, he connected with alumni on LinkedIn and started using our resources like SIGI3, like what can I do with this major, like LinkedIn. He ended up securing a corporate finance internship in Atlanta this past summer. So that was summer 2020. Now, again, I need to update this. It says that he's a finance sophomore. Now, as a junior, he is graduating early and has already secured his full-time position. Amanda also has secured her full-time position. So you can see that these are just a couple of examples of how engaging preparing early is going to be beneficial to you. So thinking about your career, thinking about your major in relation to your career is how you can really do this. Some things to consider, your resume and cover letter. Go ahead and start on those now. You are going to want to spend several hours on your resume and cover letter. This is technically something that you could whip together in a short amount of time, but it is not going to be the best resume and cover letter that you can do. So start on those now. Work on them. Develop them over the next few years rather than in a crunch type situation. You're developing it and you're scrambling to get it done. Work on those things now. In terms of internships, at minimum, you have three opportunities for an internship. The summer after freshman year, so this summer, the summer after sophomore year, and the summer after junior year. Push yourself to try to get at least those three internships. Depending on your major, when you are a junior or a senior, you can actually intern for academic credit as well. So you do have the opportunity to get even more internships. But at minimum, focus on getting an internship every single summer that you are not in school. Start to network at employer visits on campus. Like I mentioned, this week we have employers on campus, February 23rd, 24th, and 25th, that are looking to hire our students. So show up, even if it is a virtual event and it's kind of weird and it's kind of funky, show up, put your best foot forward, impress them with how awesome you are. Work on your LinkedIn profile as well. This is kind of in line with your resume and cover letter. Yes, you technically could, could create a LinkedIn profile in a short amount of time. But instead of making yourself under this crunch situation, give yourself some time. Look at your peers, look at your classmates, 
What do their LinkedIn profiles look like? Start to develop your LinkedIn. Also think about your social media as well. Really the biggest one that I'm going to touch on is LinkedIn, which is your professional networking site. So I'm not going to really touch a ton about your social media other than to say be mindful of what you are putting on your social media. The last thing that I want to put on the screen here for you is our four year career planning timeline. So using our mantra of explore, prepare and engage, we have broken down what you should be doing freshman, sophomore, junior and senior years to explore, prepare and engage with the end goal being employment. So that could be the military, that could be gainful employment like a full time job. This could also be military. So this is linked on our website. I'm not going to go into detail about every single thing with this, but you can see explore freshman year is identifying skills, interests and values. So that's SIGI 3. Complete your online career assessment. That's also SIGI 3. Begin exploring career options. That is using the visual map that we made at the beginning and also using what can I do with this major. So what else can you do to explore, prepare, and engage as a freshman? Engage here, search for a summer job or internship. So all of these things I have mentioned before that are all going to build on each other. So maybe sophomore year, we start to work on your resume and your cover letter. Maybe junior year, we start to develop your interview skills. And then senior year is where you are really heavy into that job search. So all of these things are going to build on each other. Senior year, you can't look for a job if you don't know what your values and, and interests are. Um, junior year, you can't talk about what you are skilled at, what you value in an interview if you haven't done that assessment. So all of these things kind of build and go along with each other. As I want to show you our information here. So we are not really doing drop in hours as much as we were before. We do have them on our front porch, but the best way to get an internship is here through Handshake. Create an appointment, set up an appointment with us, a career center staff member, and we can do your appointment virtually. So it would be through Zoom. So set that up in Handshake but our phone number, our email is on there. Let us know if you have any questions. If you're struggling to set up an appointment, let us know through calling or emailing us and we can help you set that up. But I just wanna stress the importance of thinking about your major in the context of your career now as a freshman, rather than waiting until it is too late because you've taken X number of courses, because you're a senior, those sorts of things. So do reach out if you have any questions and look forward to helping you. Thanks. Have a great day.